say, I can't make it. Well, I don't want the church, that, that all they, I don't want them to have my money. See, we don't need your money. God doesn't need your money. God owns everything. He don't need your money. We desire your presence. We desire to see you come to Jesus Christ. But it seems to me that the devil says there's so, there's so much time left. Or it seems that salvation, he says, will come in a season. That season is not yet. But see, Jesus told him, he said, you say four months and harvest comes. He said, but I say unto you, behold, the fields are white and they're ready to harvest. The harvest is now. The fields are always white. Harvest is now. The fields are always white. But there are few laborers to work in His field. And I believe what God wants tonight, God is looking to stir up some hearts of some laborers that want to go to work for Him. There's a job to be done, church. And that's the word that I've heard from God. I heard it this morning. Brother Emmons, as soon as I, as soon as I was getting up, let me tell you how God works. People, for some reason, like to see signs and wonders. Well, let me tell you, God didn't give me a sign, but I want you to wonder about this. I was standing there and I was praying and I heard God say, I want you to preach about sinners. And I turned around and Brother Emmett said, I need you to preach tonight. Amen. Like that. That's how God works. That's how He works. God knows, doesn't He? Yes, He does. He knows before we know. He knows what's best for us, doesn't He? My favorite part out of that parable that he speaks of those that were bade. And it said that, that the servant came in and he said, Lord, it is done. And yet there's room. There's room. As I look around, he wasn't kidding. There's room. There's room, church. What if you don't know who they are? What if you don't know their names? Does it matter? No, they were still bought with a price. The same price was paid for me as it was for them. What, what, you, what if they're mean? It doesn't matter. There was a time in my life when I was mean. There was a time in my life when I was lost. When I was the one that, that, that was the neighbor that needed witness to. A, a neighbor that needed invited to the house of God. A neighbor that, that needed to hear somebody come up to them and say, hey, you remember that brother Mick? We're having revival. Why don't you come hear a man? Why don't you come hear a preacher tell you about Jesus? And all it took was just a little effort from a servant doing the will of his Lord. God doesn't mean to scold anybody. But God needs laborers tonight. I'm sorry, when I envisioned this, I envisioned it different. I envisioned a, a, a pep rally, I guess if you will. A pep rally for God. Maybe a rally of the laborers. Maybe that God would stir up somebody's heart. Stir up a desire that's in your soul. What are you doing for God? What have you done for him lately? You coming to church is for you. What have you done for him? Don't mistake your coming here and sitting in this church as a gift to God from you. No, it's his gift to you from him that you're sitting here. It's by his grace that you're even in this place. But what have you done for him? What have we done for you, Lord? Lord, what do you want us to do? God said, I want you to go into the highways and I want you to go into the hedges and I want you to tell them about me. Yes. What have we done? Are we doing enough? Yet there's room. When we get to heaven, we're going to be accountable what we've done for God. And I already know because God told me that he's already stirred fire up in people that's sitting in this room. There's a fire burning. There's a desire. I don't know about you, but I want to work for God. Because you know something, Brother Jim, if I stay busy in God's work, I won't have time to listen to anything the devil has to say. If I stay busy 
working for the Son of God, I won't have to worry about ever laboring for the devil again. If I stay busy seeking out the will of God, I know that I'll be in his will when my time comes. And that goes for every one of you. I'm a God, and I'll tell you what, you know what God's saying? He's looking for somebody tonight. Not just one, not just two, and not just three. God has come to Hickory Grove Church to recruit laborers tonight. And I don't know about you, but I, I hope it's stirring in your soul like it is mine. Church, we need to get on fire for God. We need to get back to when we pray. We pray and we expect God to answer because I believe that even God himself is excited about what's about to happen. I believe people's gonna be saved. I believe our revivals are gonna be on fire and I believe our pews are gonna be full because even if we have to build, we'll build, won't we? Some set in doubt, they say, we're a long way from needing to build. They thought that before the rain started falling, didn't they? <laughs> My goodness, you're building an ark. What are you building it for? It ain't never rained. Church, I'm telling you, the rain's coming. Amen. First, we need to rejoice. Why? Because we need to be all right with ourselves and God before we can ever help anybody else. We need to restore with those that have backslid and those that are out, we need to encourage them to be here. And we need to do it with love. We need to do it with compassion. We need to do it with prayer. And we need to be fervent about it. Not just, man, we'd, we'd really like to have you. No, we need to grab a hold of them and say, listen, I love you. Be careful. Why? Because I've already been there. If you wait too long to get back on fire for God, there won't be a fire left in you. And you'll be out and you'll be cold and in the dark. But we need to press forward. And we need to pursue them, if you will with our prayers, with our emotions, with our fervency, and let them know that God loves them. The church needs to restore. And now the church needs to replenish. You say restore and replenish. Now think about this. When we start to restore, the church will start to replenish. How many's got lost neighbors? Sorry, my throat's getting dry. How many's got lost neighbors? Can I see just a little bit of effort if you don't mind? Do we got any lost neighbors? Absolutely. What are you doing for them? Now, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to ask you to say a word right here, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to answer me. I want you to be honest in your heart. Because God wants you, God already knows. Now be honest with yourself. That's the first step to restoration. Being honest with yourself. Yes. Have you been praying for him? What about the neighbor that blows grass over in your yard? Are you praying for him? I'm serious. Think about that. I had a neighbor that used to do it, and that used to make me matter and far. Because I labored in my yard to make it look good and then he'd come blow a big hunk of pile up in my yard. And then I'd get mad and blow it back. 